Ah, I mean, bro, dude, let me tell you something. I had to wake up every morning and play positive shit. And listen to an hour of people I didn't know saying positive shit just to undo all the negativity. Yeah, it's amazing what you store yeah. and what, and it's amazing how that plays so much a part in self-worth. And you don't even realize it. And you don't realize it. Yeah. So I think with the the record, the, the, like the the, the 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 hardest part for me to is deal with was the fame. I didn't like. It. Right. Like I remember one time I went to the Coliseum to get some sneakers. This was like after Shit's Real was out and all that shit. And I always went to the haircut hut in the Coliseum yeah. with Fahim and them. Exactly. Fahim used to always cut my hair. I just told. L Lil Peter, I told P2 this shit last night. I remember Vine would cut my hair and he'd be like, yo, you know, your hair, just before shit's real, uh, he's like, yo, you know, you got a crown on the top of your head, like your hair, line, your hair is spins in a spot. Spins in a spot, uh -huh. And he's like, yo, anyone that has that is a king. One day you're going to be a king, right? And he will always say that to me. Whenever he would cut my hair, fast forward to the day I go get the sneakers, shit's real is out. I stopped to talk to Fire and them. Um, Y'all turned around and the whole fucking- Coliseum was, was on you. Was on me, bro. And it bugged me out. I couldn't get out of the barbershop. And you gotta understand, like, the barbershop, there was no door, it was just an open in booth. Space. Yeah. You walk right in. Yeah, you could walk and right in. And you go side to side. So I'm, like, trapped in the barbershop. Yeah. And I'm like terrified, bro. Like, I can't even lie. I was, I was scared to death. Right. And I don't think people meant any harm, but it was just too much for me. And I remember like finding them niggas, they, they like got in front of the. And cleared it out for you. Just enough for me to get. And I took a cab up there, so the nigga Fahim was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> He said he wasn't driving. Yeah, he wasn't driving. Yeah. <laughs> he was there for a minute. Yeah, so. Yeah. Oh, man. Fahim's like, yo, where's your car at? Where's your cab? I was like, I didn't even call it. Like, he's like, yo, we gonna get you out of here. And then a cab pulled up, and he just threw me in the cab. And before he closed the door, he's like, yo, I told, I told you, you he was gonna, gonna be, be a king. king. <laughs> And I I went home. Came full circle. That's where that Nas story came from. Yeah, but I cry, I like burst into tears when I got my car. I think Irv came to the crib because I called him. I was like, yo, I just got mobbed at the, the, the Coliseum. And, like my hand was shaking and and I just bust out crying on some real shit. And the nigga Irv was like, Mike, Mike, yo, it's going to be all right. He's like, yo, you got to let this shit out. It's all right, sometimes that's good. Yeah. It's an emotional thing. Yeah, and I was like, I mm -hmm. don't like this shit. Music mm -hmm. is emotional, that's it's what I was like. It's so crazy how someone you, you lean on in a moment like that, back then, it turns into what it is now. Yeah, you know, but it's life, bro. You mm -hmm. think he's upset because he feel like he should have had more involvement in your career or? You should have went further. I don't think it's any of that. I think honestly, he uses the 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 count of songs he did as like on oh, some real shit. This nigga reminds me of Trump, bro. On some real shit because he uses that and he'll say, "Oh, I only produced two songs." Okay, nigga, but you produce single life, usual suspect. And life and lesson on the second album. Right. So what happened to the the whole? Oh, he didn't believe in me. He wanted to go get love. I didn't do that for the second album. Like I said, if you wanted to produce six songs, you could have. If you wanted to produce eight, the beats you brought me were trash, bro. The ones you brought me that I could fuck with that compelled me to write. You know, as an MC, my nigga. That music has to tell you where to go. Go, yeah. I've never ever did a song and said, yo, I'm gonna write this and then I'll go get the beat. Especially not back then. 
I would hear the beat and the beat would tell me, no, you supposed to write this, this to me. Right. So if you giving me shit and it all sounds like wooden soldiers marching, <laughs> nigga, I, I'm not rhyming to that bullshit. But even so, like, where does the animosity come from? Just you not picking his beats? I think it was that. I think his true animosity lies in the fact that I think he really just tried to use me for an example of if you don't do what I want you to do, these are the results, and I'm powerful now, and I can do this because I could just do this. So let me just have my fun with making you the example. Mm. Mm. And that's pretty much because I could see if we got to a point where he was like, you didn't believe in me, so don't be around me. Nigga, I was at Crack House. Crack House is one and two. Mm -hmm. Right. I was on Star Island with niggas when you told me to come out. I was up at the Inc. I was at Def Jam so much, people thought that I was signed to fucking Def Jam. This is how I know Mike Kaiser and Kevin Lyles and Julie and Todd Moskowitz and nigga Leo would be like, Mike Geronimo, hmm. I want you to come in my office and LL has a new album and he's done a song called Father and I think it's amazing. I want you to sit with me and tell me what you think. Yo, that is awesome. <laughs> and I'm bugging out because I'm like, okay, you like the end all be all up here. And at that time, Def Jam was like a nightclub, nigga. Like, you could look down the Hit hallway. Hitmaker said that the other day. <laughs> nigga. Nori would be rolling up here. Same exact thing. Met the man and Red Man would be it performing a, all in together now. Like that's just been saying that for years too. Yeah. I told everybody Def Jam, De that Def Jam right. time was special. Like, nigga, all they know. needed was a fucking disco oh, ball boy. to drop out the sky. <laughs> right. Def Jam. Right. It was the most amazing label ever. Bro. Ever at that time. It was unbelievable. Ever. You walk through Murder you, you walk into Rockefeller. You walk into it's fucking, blood you, you yeah. walk into Bloodline. And you go downstairs, the you had Chris Lighty downstairs Chris, with Fox Violet, and Brown. And all of them. And Violet, like, you walk in the building, you just see everybody. <sighs> Nigga, I was just so amazed at how they conducted themselves. That was, was black like, people heaven. Like, Nigga, <laughs> Nigga, <laughs> like the tunnel. Nigga, heaven at the I, time. He ain't smoke lying. weed, I told him we all could smoke that, weed. All of that, all of that. The security would come, they would be like, yo, leave them alone. They making money, security radio down they'd be like, <laughs> Yo, we're leaving. We had sex in there. Yo, we closed the door. We were fucking in there. Working Did, girls was coming in there. You I know mean, what was the best part? When, because you know, there's not Instagram, so they would have a book of whores you could order anything. You have photos. See, Another studio they had, had, yeah. They had back pain. Yeah. They, they look, had tickets you could buy. And me, like, book. I, I was any type of picture you want. Blonde hair. I didn't even Rick. know that. No, but see, Nigga, but, but I didn't see, even he's know talking that. about. Yeah, How that Heineken can get to the book. Yo, yeah, bro, yo no, no, he's, he's talking about a book. time. It was another that, studio. That, that, was, that was a time. Yeah, that was a time. So what was it like? Okay, so 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 moving forward, <laughs> um, Murder Inc. starts to pop. What's what's going on between you guys? Uh, the tension is building. Mm. It's building, and I can see that TVT. Now I'm older. And now I think I'm getting ready to go into starting the second album and I'm like, um, TVT doesn't have it together. Like they don't, <laughs> and it was worse for me because you gotta understand, I was their first rap artist on their first rap label. Right. So it was a lot of pressure on my, so my shoulder. Like, it was okay if acts four, five, and six didn't pan out. I can't not pan out. And it's not just about me selling X amount of units. I have to do well so that this label grows. Right. 
And I don't. Th I think they think that I wasn't aware of that. Mm -hmm. But these are the things that when I would go home and I'm by myself, along with dealing with the friction of the people that I'm around, mm. along with dealing with personal trauma, trauma, my personal trauma. trauma, which I wasn't even recognizing, still, still not processing, along with dealing with now shit is completely different. Now, like my mom's, so Michael, uh, you think you could help me with the? Of course, Ma. Well, everyone around, anyone who knows me will readily tell you, money never made me happy. Me being able to make the people around me happy made me happy. Right. Right. So I would take the entire wastelands, I mean, literally, nigga, I would come to the tunnel with like 50, 60 people, and I would pay for everyone. And I would buy liquor for everyone. If you didn't have, uh, nigga, me and Inf and George could be, and Flush could be here right on 125th. And I think there was a, uh, there was a place called the Mart or some shit like that that was like a Yeah, 125 Mart. Well, yeah, from the Apollo. And they had like Heli Hansen. It's and closed all that now, shit. yeah. Nigga, if you was with me and you wasn't good, yo, you need a, a Heli Hansen too? Okay, cool. Put it on the counter. That's what made me happy. That was my joy. My joy was, if I can make everything around me happy, then I'm good. Then you're good. Well, and I would never want no one around me. Like, I'm not going to be around niggas and I'm dripping and niggas is starving. Right. It's hot for trap trapper turn smack rapper. Only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars, I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard. Making fiends leave earth, you heard. Got your baby mama thirst, you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to surf, you heard.